In this video, I'm going to demonstrate managing the cooking process from within Houdini and build a second digital asset that imports the final cliffs into Unreal. This becomes particularly useful when we increase the subdivisions and reduce the delete small cliffs threshold significantly. Later on in the video series, it took two hours to generate the cliffs at the highest subdivision level and at my target delete small cliffs threshold. I generated 298 unique cliffs that were split up into 417 files. If you intend to generate geometry on this scale, then there can be advantages of managing this process in Houdini rather than in Unreal using Houdini Engine. And it also becomes important to manage the import process into Unreal as importing that many large files introduces significant issues as I find Unreal running out of memory and crashing when trying to import that many files in one go. In some ways I could have concluded this video series at the end of the last video, but because the goal of Project Pegasus was to develop workflows that utilise Nanite, I really wanted to push the level of detail as far as I could. So this takes us into a less of a step-by-step -step process and more of a testing and troubleshooting process. Cooking times will increase and the level of detail that you can achieve and the success of importing the results into Unreal will very much depend on your memory and CPU resources. But I didn't want to shy away from this process and instead I want to demonstrate the full process I undertook to achieve the final results. In this video, I'm going to recook the cliffs at higher subdivision level and then build a digital asset that I can use to import the results into Unreal. Previously, I turned the top net into a digital asset, but now I just want to make a few changes to it to make it easier to run from within Houdini. So let's click Save No Type to make sure all our changes are saved, and then click Match Current Definition which will lock our digital asset. And now I can access these parameters. If I come inside, it's locked all of these uh, internal nodes. So I can't access these. What I can actually do, if I open up the type properties of our digital asset, is come over to the node tab. And here I can add some editable nodes. So on our editable nodes field, let's click this icon on the end. And this will allow us to select some nodes you want to have editable. So let's select all of these, all of these nodes, and the local scheduler. Let's hit apply. Our node is currently locked, so we need to unlock it and then save it. And now we can click save node type and match current definition, and that will lock our digital asset. So now if we come inside, And now these nodes aren't locked and I can make changes to them. So this allows us to work with this digital asset in a multitude of ways. We can just treat it as a digital asset, have access to all parameters here, where we can make changes, where we can generate work items or cook the output, or I can import the digital asset into Unreal and use it with Houdini Engine. Or alternatively, I can have access to these individual steps if I want to run them from within the TOPS network. So this way it makes the process very flexible. So here we have our delete small cliffs threshold set to 1000 and our subdivision set to 2. They also give us more cliffs than we had previously as well as more subdivisions so our end result should have more detail. Let's come to the working directory where our files are saved to. And we've uh, changed the parameters on our extract cliffs, which is this folder here. So I'm going to delete all of the results from that step afterwards, because I need to rebook those. So let's delete those results. Because I want to see the process happen stage by stage, let's come inside our top network, come to our output, right click, and click cook node. And now our top network will bake. The load landscape file was already present, so that just immediately finished. And now it's moved on to the extract cliffs. And now it's cooking with that decreased threshold, which is going to result in a lot more work items. So it's now extracted 298 cliffs from our landscape. 
And now it's began to generate the glyphs with that higher subdivision. And again, it's important to monitor our um, resource usage. So currently we're maxing out our CPU and because we are increased the subdivisions here, I'm also expecting to see more memory use as well. Because some of these work items have finished, it's moved on to the next step for those work items. And we can start to see those files appear in our directory. So again, I'm going to leave this running and we'll see how long it takes to get through this process. This is why I prefer to run this process from Houdini, because I can see how far it's progressing through each work item and if any have failed. And I find this process far more transparent when I can see it inside of Houdini than if I was to run the digital asset inside Unreal using Houdini Engine. This took about 40 minutes to cook, which is a reasonable amount of time, but that process generated 298 procedural cliffs for the entire landscape. So that kind of shows the power of using top nets to run and generate large amounts of procedural content. In total, 1,726 work items have been cooked. We can see here on the cliff generator HDA, there's 298 work items. So that's 298 unique cliffs. And then we split that up into 415 tiles. And if we take a look at our directory on disk, in the cliff tile split folder, I have all of those tiles grouped together in multiples of 50. And here are the individual files. So now I want to import these into Unreal. And what I'm going to do is build another digital asset that I can bring into Unreal and use to import all of these files. So this is another way of loading files into Unreal that you have output from a TOPS network. Let's come back up to the object level and drop down another geometry node. And I'm going to call this PE PDG because it's going to be another procedural dependency graph and call it file pattern. So inside I'm going to add a top net. Let's call this top file pattern. There's the local scheduler for our top network and I'm going to add a file pattern. And then straight onto that, an output. I think I name is the same as I did previously, he out. And this is all this digital asset is going to contain, just these nodes. And this top node will create work items based on files that match a certain pattern. For example, so if I navigate to my working directory, And select one of my files, hit accept. Let's make this nice and big so you can see the full path. And currently I'm just selected one file. Let's generate a node. And I get one work item because currently I have one file selected. But if I replace this file name with an asterisk, so I have asterisk.bgeo. And now let's generate this node. And now I have 50 work items. And this asterisk is a string pattern. We have a look at the documentation. You can see here, asterisk matches any string. And if you look at the examples, matches everything beginning with geo. So geo asterisk. And here I'm specifying asterisk.bgeo. So any file with a file name that ends in the extension .bgeo is getting loaded as a work item. And there are some other string patterns here. For instance, a question mark, which matches any single character. So this works similar to the asterisk, but rather than this being any string, this is just a single character. So for example, 
I'm going to replace just this first zero here with a question mark and regenerate the node. Now I have 10 work items. That's because it's matching any file that leads in three zeros. In other words, any file that's below 10. And if I cook this node and double click the work item, you can see the file that it's loading in. If I click through these, you can see all of them all the way up to nine. So I'm going to use these string patterns to selectively load in my files, my cliff files, into Unreal in batches. This way I can monitor the process of them being imported and ensure that I'm not going to run out of memory or computer resources as I'm loading all of these files into Unreal. Because I have over 400 files, that's a lot of geometry to be importing into Unreal all in one go. And so by breaking them up and importing them in batches, I can ensure I won't run, a, run out of computer resources and I won't run out of any of, of memory. So let's build this into a digital asset. Come back up to the object level, right click on our file pattern node and create new. We already have our name there, so I'm going to check author. Let's just capitalize these and make a file pattern two words and put this into our Pegasus menu entry and set a custom library path, which will be to the path variable that we set inside our package, which was Pegasus demo. And that's saving into our directory. We'll have all of our digital assets and hit create. And we click destroy all parameters. Let's come over to parameters and hide all the parameters that are currently on our object. Click invisible. And I'm going to add two string parameters. The first is going to be called directory string. Oops, let's add a space. And the second one's going to be called file pattern string. Click apply, and there you can see the parameters have been added. Let's come into our digital asset and to our file pattern node. What I'm going to do is copy the first part of this string, which is the directory to our cliff tile split directory. Come back up to the object level, select our file pattern digital asset and paste that into the first parameter for our directory string. Come back into our digital asset again, into the top network. I'm just going to copy the second half, which is from 000, which is the subfolder, right up to the end. And then come back up to the object level and paste that into our file pattern string parameter. So this way I split this up into two separate parameters. This is just to make things easier when I'm in Unreal. I'm not going to be updating and changing this string. I'm just updating the subfolder and the file name. So this just makes things easier. I can have a parameter specifically for the directory, which I don't need to change. And I can just update this one parameter. Let's just set this to what I want the default to be. And what I'm going to do is leave the zeros for the subfolder and just rename this file to asterisk dot bgeo and then come back to the type properties window right click copy defaults from node copy defaults from node and hit apply there we go now those are the default values and i just need to reference those into our tops network so let's copy the first parameter come back into our top net down to our file pattern 
and so let's delete all of this to paste relative reference. Let's come back up to the object level, copy our second parameter. And then paste relative reference. So you have a reference to both of those parameters. Now I just need to append them together. So I'm going to delete these two backticks that are separating them and add a plus. Looks like we've got an error. Let's just see what happens when we generate the node. And there we go. And now we have a work item for each one of our files to match this file pattern. And when I'm in Unreal, I now can change this file pattern string to match these directories and load in our files in batches. So let's right click on this node and click save node type. And one thing I always forgot to do, most important of all, is to actually add our custom Pegasus logo. There we go, and now we have our logo on our digital asset. Right click, save node type. That's the end of this video. In the next part, I will import this digital asset into Unreal.